Hello and welcome to another review video. In today's video I'll talk about Kulupu with the ticker symbol KLP which is a project building on the famous Polkadot. Now they're not really building on Polkadot but they're building on the framework on which Polkadot is built on and that is Substrate. So I know we've got these weird names like Kulupu, Kusama, right? Maybe it may not sound weird to you but to some people it may do, right? And, and it's interesting. The important thing is the project itself and what they have to bring to the table and what's interesting about Kulupu is that they are the only proof of work building on substrate interoperable with Polkadot. So that is pretty cool and you may be asking yourself well, why do we have more proof of works when there are so many proof of stakes? Well why not? Maybe they have a specific use case and we will be going into that in a moment. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to bore you. You're probably only interested in when will the price go up if I make an entry? And again this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own research as always and do check the disclaimer in the description. But we'll be taking a look at coin market cap, then I'll take a look at Polka projects and then we'll go at the website and see what Kulupu is all about. Now the website is actually quite straightforward, not too much information on there to bore you, right? And of course there is if you want to get technical, but I'm going to be focusing on the main aspects to try to summarize it. But hey, if you're new here, my name is Claudio and this is Crypto Chain, the channel where I do crypto news, reviews, tutorials and interviews. So please consider subscribing if you're new and don't forget to enable notifications so you don't miss the next video I upload that may interest you. As always, do, don't forget to like the video or dislike if you don't enjoy it and leave a comment below and let me know what do you think of the project that I talk about as always or the tutorial I do any type of thing that I may do in the video and I'll try my best to help you as soon as possible. But to get straight in, Kulupu is currently trading at 78.6 cents at the moment, down 0.07%. So not too much down considering the big dip that it had already. If we take a look here and as always, if you're new, you should be able to see the chart here when you're on CoinMarketCap by just clicking on seven days or one month, for example and it will uh, zoom it out for you. And here you can see the historical chart. So here, if we go to even three months back, uh, let's click on that and see, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, that's the furthest back we've got. So 28th of August, as you can see, it was trading at 240 and then 270. It was 270 all time high here and then it just went down and down and now it's finding some kind of support here, right? It's, as you can see, it's stabilizing around this 80 cents area here dip into as low as 75 on some days but normally around 80 cents and that's of course because the whole market has crashed right so it's no surprise that Kulupu has also been affected and the other thing with Kulupu that we got to take a look at here again the total supply is 28.8 million so it is quite low if you think about it right you can multiply the amount by the circulating supply which is this one at the moment and because it's proof of work miners are constantly generating new klp coins and that is one klp per second that's how many are being generated at the moment because that's how long the block time takes and if we go to market pairs here we can see there are some exchanges like mxc a hotbit which i don't really recommend i know some people do like to trade on hotbit and not really trade but more like buy uh, all these low cap tokens and maybe sell them there but not really trade you can't really trade there you you trade on exchanges like binance like coinbase around the bigger ones maybe even qcoin but you can't really chart things on hotbit and mxc where the volume is pretty much fake right because if you place uh, a buy order just above just below the lo the lowest sell order then you'll see that the bots are not going to do anything for a while, right? But if you don't do that, you're going to see the bots placing large buy orders or sell orders, which are, come on, fake, right? Because there isn't that much supply to, to generate that much. So that's just for them to be able to generate this fake volume, of course. And as you can see here, 2.5 million is the volume in the last 24 hours. Confidence is low. I like the way um, you can now mark this on CoinMarketCap. You can choose your confidence in a specific uh, exchange. But they are also on Bibox, right? I really like Bibox. I think it may be pronounced Bibox or Buybox. I'm not sure. It is a Chinese exchange, but I've been using them for ages, like back when I used to trade ONG and ONT uh, in the early days of 2019. So Bibox is a good exchange and you can get Kulupu there if you're interested, of course. Um, but as always, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Just a kind reminder. Please do check the disclaimer. Now they are pretty um, they are pretty busy here as you can see they've been doing a lot of stuff they've been posting updates on Twitter uh, 11 hours ago we got the voluntary minor taxation activities which active activate uh, which is going to activate in September 12th 
This will enable Kulupu to pay its community for projects, roles and proposals related to the development of the network. Kulupu was built to be agile, explains the council member and founder, a core developer at Parity. So you can get more information on that too here uh, if you join their Twitter page. They've also got a Reddit page here, which is pretty cool with people asking basic questions here. But Kulupu, you got to think of it as a really technical project. And let's dig straight in here on Polka Project. And this website is great if you're following Polkadot like I am. Uh, because here you can see all these different uh, projects that are building on Polkadot and they're under different tabs here. We've got the token tab, the palette, the oracle, the DAO, the bridge, the data. So these are all the different roles that they're playing with the Polkadot ecosystem or substrate. So in this case, Kulupu is under smart contracts and under token, right? I have checked the other ones, it's not under anything else. So their whole purpose is a substrate based smart contracts token. And actually what's interesting about Polka project, if you click on the project, it gives you more information, like a summary of what the project is all about. So you don't have to spend too much time digging into it. If you just want to take a quick glimpse, then of course, if you if it catches your interest, of course, you'll go to the website to check more information. Kulupu is a self-updating, self-governed blockchain system using proof of work as its consensus engine. Kulupu is built on with the Substrate framework. It is one of the first blockchains that combine proof of work consensus engine with forkless upgrades. So that is the trick right here. Forkless upgrades, which is great because uh, sometimes when you have upgrades on proof of work, they do end up turning into a fork. So that means you'll get two different coins, right? A coin which is going to start from a specific block time and from a specific block. Whereas with Kulupu, no more forkless ones, right? So that is pretty cool. We're only going to have Kulupu. Kulupu is a self-updating, self-governed blockchain using proof of work as its consensus. So this is just basically reiterating everything here. It has all the normal features you'd expect in a proof of work blockchain. No pre-mine. Kulupu was launched in September 2019 with zero coin in its Genesis block. It then emits one KLP per second to miners till today. ASIC resistant, Kulupu uses the battle tested random X mining algorithm from Monero. So it shares something with Monero, right? It's not really like Bitcoin, but like Monero. So that's pretty cool. A bit of a privacy focus there, but they're not really private, right? You can't expect Kulupu to be private because you can see all this information on the Explorer when you generate a transaction. You can see the from and the to address. Like any decentralized blockchain system, it is censorship resistant, accessible to everyone peer-to-peer -peer and permissionless. In addition, Kulupu contains several unique features. On-chain governance and fortress upgrade. Kulupu has an on-chain democracy system. Users and a democra democratically elected council can submit referendum proposals, which are voted by coin holders. So this is one use case here of the KLP coin. This user-driven governance system allows Kulupu to enact runtime upgrade much more easily and with much more reduced risk of network split compared with hard fork-based governance. This system also allows upgrading the consensus, including mining algorithm and difficulty adjustment algorithm. You've got the voluntary taxation and treasury, a democracy governance, which allows Kulupu to build a public good treasury. Uh, with coin holders having the final say on how the funds are spent. So that is pretty cool because it gives the freedom to the holder. So if you hold any KLP, I do hold some KLP myself. I do have interest in this. And thankfully I got in on this dip, which has happened for the last couple of days now. Uh, but again, I mean, I'm, I'm fairly motivated at, and fairly confident that this is going to go up in price at some point. It could be a couple of weeks. It could be less than that because this is crypto. Anything could happen in any split moment. It could dip even lower. Be aware of the risks as always, right? Uh, don't take my word for it, but just know that with crypto, everything could happen, especially with such a low supply coin. It could easily be manipulated. And if, if somebody wants to get in, they could easily get the price high really, really quickly. So you got to be careful with that as well. Try your best to avoid buying the tops, but sometimes it depends. You're buying someone else's top or someone else's bottom, right? So it's hard to know. Like maybe a couple of weeks from now, it could end up being five bucks, right? For all we know. This is how it is with prices with crypto. There's no guarantee with anything. And it's hard to know exactly when you can, can buy at the right time. You can just make assumptions based on what you see historically around right? the price movement. So from my point of view, I think this is a good time, right? Because for the last couple of days, we've been quite stable at this price, but it does not mean that it couldn't go lower as uh, more Kulupu are being generated by the miners, right? We can see that every time they're mining a block, they're being rewarded and it emits one KLP per second, right? As we can see here. So that's that. Let's take a quick look at their website. So here's their website here. Pretty basic website. It takes you to their GitHub page if you want or the discussion. There's no information on the team here as we can see. 
but we've got all the information we need and like i said kulupu is very technical right so you gotta be techy tech savvy if you want uh, to get into kulupu and you may be asking yourself which wallet can i store kulupu in well you can use the polkadot wallet for that so do check out my polkadot web wallet tutorial not the mobile wallet polka wallet because it's not supported in polka wallet i couldn't see kulupu in there but in the web wallet, Kulupu is there. It's under the live networks phase there. So if you check out my review of, of, of my tutorial actually on the web wallet for Polkadot, you'll see Kulupu in that list as well. You can switch to that. It'll generate a tr an address for you if you already have an account. If not, you need to create an account, of course, uh, like you do with Polkadot. But if you have a Polkadot account, it, it can be reused, right? You can use the same account across different networks, but just keep in mind that the public address differs. So do not use the Polkadot public address to receive Kulupu if you're buying them from an exchange. Make sure you switch to the Kulupu network first and once you're in the Kulupu network then copy the address from there which is of course going to be different and then use that to send funds to from the exchange. On Bbox it took me like four or five minutes to get them after it moved to pending status and so on so it shouldn't be too long like a couple of minutes you should have your uh, your, your coins and they'll show up of course in the web wallet for Polkadot. So Again, they're just reiterating here is a self-updating, self-governed blockchain system, no pre-mining, ASIC resistance, uh, on-chain governance and forkless upgrades, signed mining and block rewards. So miner provides security at a specific point in time for the blockchain. It, in the meantime, that specific point in time security is expected to have a lasting effect for the blockchain for a year, certain period of time. Block rewards lock and signed mining allows Kulupu to account for that security aspect. It also prevents hash power rental attacks and botnets so there's the voluntary taxation again token holders or i should i say coin holders because it is kind of a blockchain right if you think about it they've got their own explorer and all but it is built on substrate so they're sharing the same polka dot uh, javascript wallet but uh, basically the thing is with them like if, if you are if you're a, a coin holder you can vote for different actions to be taken right so of course if you vote you have to lock so like you've seen in my Polkadot video, if you haven't watched them, do watch them. You do need to lock uh, coins for a specific period of time in order to vote. And based on the locking period and the amount you've got, you get that voting power. So if you don't want to lock anything, you get like 0.1x uh, voting power. So if you hold like a, a lot of coins and you don't want to lock them, you can just vote with 0.1x. So you have a say in the decision making but you don't have a big say right because other people that are willing to lock for say a couple of months they can get a lot more voting power than you uh, with a lot less holding of klp coins so that's something to keep in mind and again they get locked up and then they get unlocked automatically so uh, if you're not planning to sell assuming the price would assuming you buy in and the price goes 10x and you're okay with waiting longer then uh, of course you can do you can vote if you're interested again it's more for techie people most most folks are not interested in voting they're just interested in holding hoping that the price goes up and then selling but if you are interested in voting if you are more tech savvy and you want to have a say in the network you believe in kulupu then you can do so again just to reiterate that now with the total supply it is an adjusted total supply, so it is a concept uh, which is in consider with consideration of the fee market. Kulupu implements the fee market, which is a method to have more predictable transaction fees. With this method, the base transaction fees are burned instead of paid to miners. Miners only retain the tips, burning the base fee is important as it avoids giving miners incentives to create artificial transactions to manipulate the fee. Kulupu may also implement a treasury and voluntary taxation system and with this implementation the treasury funding gets burnt every spending cycle so again this is good because we're seeing some burning taking place right it's not just really infinite now they are uh, they are going to be adjusting the total supply okay and that is the actual event the total supply of the blockchain with considerations of the fee market and so on reaching fixed adjusted total supply so to reach the fixed adjusted total supply we assume normal usage of kulupu blockchain that is each block is on average half full of its block weight limit a block half full would burn 8 klp and as a result any emission scheme with eventual tail emissions of equal or less than 8 klp can be considered to have fixed adjusted total supply and there have been talks in the telegram page again you can find the link in the description of this video as well as a link to this website of course but there have been talks of them maxing out this total supply to like 120 million more or less 
but I don't think the decision has been taken to vote yet. There are just talks like internally. So again, if you're a coin holder, you can actually vote for this when this proposal is put out. So there's usually a proposal and then people can vote for those proposals uh, within the uh, Polkadot wallet, Polkadot.js, which is the web wallet for Polkadot. The other thing that they've mentioned here on their website, and they spoke spoken about this on their Telegram page too, is Solry, which is a blockchain experiment that tries to bring substrate style on-chain governance for proof of work. So they're actually going to be building with, they're actually going to be working together with Kulupu. And I think they're going to be building on Kulupu somehow. I, I didn't get this very clear yet from their Telegram page from the conversations, but they're they are building on a substrate pretty much, right? But they have proof of work as well. So they're going to become a pure coin in most possible aspects that blockchain community cares about. This includes having no pre-mine and establishes a fair launch, a use well-established proof of work consensus algorithm, and at the same time allows it to change, um, allows it to change to either become ASIC friendly or ASIC resistant. More information here to never conduct any hard fork, have clear and simple specification and things like that. And then of course be stateless to fully verify a new block. You will only need the parent block together with the parent block runtime output. And this reduces the bare minimum storage requirement for full node to nearly zero. In practice, clients can selectively choose to only store states it cares about. So yeah, this is pretty much it here. Uh, we've got the mining as a lottery, which is the last step I want to talk about here. So the mining as a lottery process should be considered is not a professional for profit process. So basically the former are hobbyists who mine using their home machines in their spare time with their spare resources. The latter are professionals who explicitly buy hardware just for mining and mine as mining farms. The problem with mining as for profit is that it is too expensive. So it discourages others from joining. Of course, like we've seen with Bitcoin, right? I can't mine Bitcoin unless I have a mining farm. I can't do it with my uh, if I get some ASICs, I won't be able to mine Bitcoin. It's not enough, right? I can't compete with all those major farms. Same with Ethereum, right? But the lottery process, on the other hand, assumes that participants do this as an activity in one's spare time. It expects close to zero cost of joining, a really small percentage of expected profit. And in the meantime, large rewards if the lottery is won. So that is pretty cool because it motivates people like you and I to do it if you don't have a farm. Those who join as professional for-profit process won't be able to compete with those who join as lottery process because the latter can afford a much lower expected reward. To make mining as lottery process a reality, there are three necessary preconditions. The mining process can only mine to a user's own wallet, but not to a third-party one. The mining algorithm must run most efficiently on commodity hardware and it must be ASIC resistance. The user experience must be easy. A miner should be easy to run. It should take advantage of the spare CPU resources, but should not affect normal usage. So that is pretty cool, right? They've thought about this throughout the whole process. So that is pretty cool, right? It's not just your typical proof of work algorithm that you've seen with Bitcoin or with Ethereum, for example. So yeah, I'm pretty bullish on Kulupu, especially because they've yet to provide more updates, right? And, and Polkadot is just early on now. They've recently just launched, so we don't even have the parachain auctions yet with Polkadot. So we've yet to see development with Kulupu too. It's still early on, it's still the early days. So yes, I am planning to huddle as long as possible basically. Obviously if the price goes 20x on me, I'm not gonna be able to uh, to not sell, right? <laughs> I mean, this is expected from many people, but long term, I think that Kulupu is gonna do pretty well. So yes, I am bullish on Kulupu. Let me know what you think. What is your opinion on Kulupu after watching this video? And as always, please do more research yourself and let me know in the comments below. If you know more than me, as always, please correct me if I'm wrong in anything. I'm really curious to get your thoughts, your opinions. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next video. Take care, bye-bye.